Hi, good morning, Linda Fussell here, and uh, it is Friday the 17th of April. I'm doing a check-in after effectively day 24 of lockdown in the UK, and just wanting to capture um, my thoughts over the last couple of days and see how you are, and some insights that I have gathered, because they've been, I've had a lot of conversations, and it's been pretty good um, and interesting to see and to talk about various things with people. So what has been happening and where am I? Well, first off, this morning um, I was bright and early on a, on a webinar at eight o'clock and that was, it was quite interesting. Um, but towards the end of that, I could hear this odd noise. I went and had a look and I have water coming through the ceiling in my bedroom. So that's a bit of, um, a bit of fun and excitement for the day. Not sure. I've had a quick look in the loft. Um, can't see anything immediate. I think it's an overflow pipe. It has stopped for the moment. I have got a bucket in place, so I will look at that properly. But right now I've got other things I need to get on with today. But that does bring me around to where one of the things I have been thinking about um, probably overnight, really, I think. I've had a very, very interesting, uh, interesting 24 hours. Probably interesting 48 hours, which is why I'm capturing these thoughts. So... One of the things that I was looking at was um, we've now had the lockdown extended for another three weeks. So we had the sort of extension not known and sort of yesterday they said, right, another three weeks. So I'm assuming that's another three weeks. Um, I don't know I don't, when we start that, if that's uh, from when the first one started or ended and or if it's starting from yesterday or if it's starting from the end of this week, who knows. But at some point... But we do know that after lockdown, at this level, um, things won't just be opened up straight away. There will be a bit, a bit of a, a change or a, a gradual loosening of various activities and opening up in that respect. So that, that is interesting. Um, and here we are. So with three weeks left of lockdown, as, as far as we know, and I say three weeks left, um, it's, been, it's been really interesting for some people. Um, I had uh, Barbara, my friend Barbara, did a guest blog, uh, which is on my website, lindafussell.com. You can read it there, talking about I'm not ready. And she was saying um, earlier this week, we'd had a conversation about I'm not ready to go back to normal life just yet. I've got a few things I needed to do. And she was saying much the same. And then on the back of that, she wrote the blog, I'm not ready. Um, and... Now with three weeks left, I've really got, I say three weeks left, I've used that twice, that's interesting. But with another three weeks grace granted as far as getting things done, I really am um, motivated to get, get things moving and, and to decide what's most important. So one of the things that I've picked up, I'm not sure where I picked it up, but somewhere along the line, it could be, on, it could be off Barbara's blog actually, another blog that she's done, she's done a few blogs was um, the concept of having just three things that you're going to do this month. And actually, I'm going to change that slightly and say three things that you're going to do in these next three weeks. And with those three things that you're going to do in the next three weeks, what three things are you going to do in the next week that are going to move you in the right direction towards that? And then having decided those things that are going to get done in the next week, what three things are you going to do um, today that are going to move you towards your weekly objective? And I've been sort of working with that uh, a little bit this week. Just I, I think I mentioned that earlier this week. So that's what I've been sort of working towards. And I did get my did get my planner out, and I have um, got some things diarised to try and achieve. Um, I've not been as successful as I would like to on that. Um, it's fair to say. Still getting a bit frustrated with myself but sometimes we need to be frustrated to make things happen to make changes happen we need to work out what's important and what's going to count so that's um that was sort of that concept but then yesterday we had um a catch up catch up with our book club group and i think i mentioned this previously when we had our book club it was really interesting to see how um, people were taking it differently and how um, people were quite lonely and distressed etc 
And so we decided to meet up every week. And now we're meeting up on a Thursday afternoon at 4.30 and it's quite nice. It was, it, yesterday was just lovely. It was lovely to check in and just see how everybody's doing and, and chat. And um, one of the ladies had a had an interesting concept. She's been really struggling. Now, she's been retired for about a year, I would say about a year, but she was a super, super efficient, hot shot um, project and program manager. I mean, really top notch. So she's been retired for a year, uh, I'd say about a year, um, and had been quite enjoying things. But during this time, completely lost and just really struggling. We are all struggling. I don't think um, I don't think that's something that we any of us can ex you know sort of get really get our heads around. Even those that have been doing things to get our lives structured for so long, we're all struggling. But this lass, um, Sylvia, um, has learnt something from I think from her sister. I think she said it was where she's taking doing a rolling plan three days at a time and I thought wow that's really good that that ties in with the three day thing that we've been talking about so there's another concept for you how about doing a three day rolling plan and seeing if that works and how you know how that um, plays into your space so that was that um, thing that came out the people that are, I find the people I see that are struggling the most are those that are um, used to connecting with people a lot so those that can't be with their families, um, really struggling, you know, if the uh, kids or parents are not living with you and they're sort of in different places and you can't really connect with them uh, in the same space physically, particularly over the Easter weekend, etc. They are struggling and there's, there's lots, of, lots of instances with that. But also, um, Barbara again, uh, she put a blog on aloneness and how she's finding it. She's lived alone for many years and traveled extensively on her own and done all sorts of um, really efficient and amazing things but she's struggling um, and she documented why why she's struggling and what she's struggling and how she's dealing with it and it's lovely to see that so I rec you know I recommend you go and have a look at um, on my blog on lindafussell.com forward slash blog and then it's um, aloneness I think is Barbara's one but anyway if you go to the blog site the blog space you will be able to find these blogs there's an awful lot on there at the minute because I'm getting guest bloggers in as well. It's just a great space to share what we're feeling, how we're doing and who we are. Um, who we are during this time, what we're finding out about ourselves. I think that's really interesting because we, so many of us live lives to meet um, others' expectations and now we're having to find out who we are and what, what's important to us and where we are. So that's that um what else has been happening i think a couple of things have become really apparent to me really over the last couple of days in that and i've i've talked about this with a number of people i've been conversing with is that whatever you wherever you are and whatever you do find things that are fun for you to do and that you enjoy doing and if you um have things that are useful to others Offer them, share them, um, whether it's for free, whether it's in a social group, whether it's um, a business offering, um, whether it's, and with it, when it's a business offering, be careful, of, and I've talked about this before, be careful about deeply discounting. Rather put the value out and then add extra. Um, just, you'll know what's right. If the value's there, you'll know what's right. And uh, another example of this came up yesterday in book club. Um, one of our ladies that was there, Anne, it used to be a Spanish teacher and she's retired for a couple of years. But now her, I think it was her niece, who's um, studying at Oxford, uh, called her up and said, I'm on board, I need something to do. Will you um, get, you know, help us with conversational Spanish again? And Anne was delighted because she normally travels across to Spain and gets to practice her Spanish and all these good things. And because she's not obviously traveling, she was worried she was going to be losing, losing the edge. So she's now doing online Spanish classes twice a week for her niece and her niece's friend. And it's great because they're just chatting online and, and doing these things. And she's loving it. It's giving her something 
um, some purpose and something to do and something she's good at and helping others. Great example. So if there's things that you are enjoying doing or like doing, share them. Find a way of, of sharing them with, with friends, families, um, you know, just, just anywhere. And sometimes just put things out there and see what happens. So that that was one of those things. And I think the following on from that, and I think I've mentioned this before, it's, it's really interesting because now things are getting really blurred in my own mind and I don't go back and have a look too much about what I did previously. I'm really documenting where I am at the moment. So um, one of the things is, and I talk about this a lot with my work, is that everybody's on a on a journey, on a path, and um, wherever you are, there are always people ahead of you and always people behind you. And so look, look ahead and see where you want to go, which, you know, which path you want to follow, but also look behind you and see who's needing a, a step up, up to the next level, up to the next rung, to, to the next level of wherever you are. And it doesn't matter where you are on this ladder, continuum, whatever, there's always somebody ahead of you and somebody behind you and make sure that you are on the right ladder you're following the people that you want to be following firstly and secondly that um, you are helping other people come up behind you so you know it's important it's important to um, help others and it's it brings into play something else that I've been thinking about and again I must have picked something up recently on this and I've talked about it before um, the joy of giving we always say the joy is in the giving but actually we have to have that balance between giving and receiving because somebody else will be giving will be having joy from giving but if we're not prepared to receive it then we are doing them a disservice we're not allowing them to give we're not accepting what they're giving and this goes this goes in all aspects whether it's your business life and we've talked about this where you've got a client who needs or wants your services you need to be offering it out there you need to be um, giving it out there to them but at the same time you need to allow them to give back to you to to pay you back so you need to be able to receive um, compensation for that whether it's their time so if it's a freebie it's there they're giving their time whether it's an exchange of um, other services or whether it's just the currency of exchange that we're all used to dealing with which is money and money um, this came up again somewhere else where they, somebody said, oh yeah, money's the root of all evil. In fact, it was on, I think it was on LinkedIn. It was a thread of something or other and somebody said, yeah, money's the root of all evil. And I went, no, it's not. Money's not the root of all evil. Um, money is just an exchange. It's just an energy and there's nothing wrong with money. We all need money as a common denominator to um, exchange our goods and services and what we want, you know, what we're needing with other people. And I say we all need it. Um, there's an element of money that's needed in the society that we've created. Will that change? Who knows? Who knows where we are? But at some point, there's always value for something that you're offering and receiving. And we need to recognize that. So that was that concept. Um, the other thing that I've been aware of is... I, I guess it follows on the same theme. Having worked from home for so many years and used zoom for i don't know five plus years really a long time there are obviously loads of people putting courses out there on how to do zoom and i, I put a blog out on my dales consulting website um it was video conferencing 101 because it's it was common across whether it's microsoft teams or zoom or whatever platform you're using um how to run video conferences and this came up in a couple of things. Um, I was talking to a friend of mine, Lee, and she was saying that she'd spent three hours on a on a conference on a call, a conference call, the day previous day, and it was grim. She probably spoke for about five minutes. People were just um, not listening. Some people liked the sound of their own voices. Uh, it was just, um, in essence, poorly chaired, and I kind of went. Phew. Okay, so people are still doing this. I would hope that some things are going out there, but I guess I've probably not been sharing um, my my blog that widely, and I haven't really been pushing the things that I can offer. 
So it goes back to what am I doing? Why am I not, um, I want to say showing up. I mean, I'm showing up here and I'm doing, doing videos and I am sharing those uh, mostly on different platforms and seeing where things are, but there are other things that I could be doing and how could I be doing it better? And I'm, I've come up with all these brilliant ideas and things I want to do and then I, I sit with them and don't make them happen. And that's my issue. That's one of my things I'm trying to work on. Having written a chapter on take action, um, get acting, get uh, activity happening, all those things. Um, and the book that I uh, collaborated with Jack Canfield and a group of amazing, um, inspiring uh, coaches and leaders and people. Uh, that is the, uh, the success formula. So um, I sometimes need to read my own chapter and go, oh yeah, that's what I should be doing. And the the reason I wrote it is because I know it's a sticking point for me. There's lots of things about uh, sorting out your mission and your vision and where you want to go and all those things, but there's less information on, so how do I actually succeed? How do I make, um, you know, don't get started on what does success look like, but how do I actually do what I'm wanting to do and plan out, make it actually happen? So um, there's that's an issue for me. But then when I look at um, the, the, the place where people are needing help, um, it seems that there are still people that are needing help with video conferencing. I can definitely help with that. There are definitely people struggling with stress and anxiety. I can definitely help with that. Um, there was, I got invited to um, a group discussion, um, which I've declined for next week, where some somebody is teaching people how to use Zoom. And I'm like, I don't really don't need to learn that. And so I replied back saying, thanks very much, but I've been doing this for years, don't, don't need to be on that. And the host said, Oh, we were hoping that other people could join and share their expertise and I kind of went hmm do I want to get involved or don't I and I haven't worked out the answer one part of me says I need to be really protective of my time and do the things I should be doing the second part of me says I can definitely add value here um, I did on um, I think it was on Twitter Somebody had put something out about, oh, you know, the thing with Zoom is you get to see yourself all the time. And that's um, that's what people are, are having to get used to. And it does take some getting used to, you know, having yourself on video and, and seeing what other people see. And it's not always the most comfortable thing, but it is what it is. And just get over it and do it. Um, so, how you know, how do you talk to Cameron? How do you do these things? Just be you and just get on with it. But one of the things I said with Zoom is that there is a little setting there. You can tick a little box that does enhance video. And that's amazing. It makes a big difference. It just sort of makes you look a little bit more fresh. <laughs> just a little bit a little bit more interesting. So uh, that was um, one of the interesting things that uh, came out. Is that there are still things that I consider absolutely basic. And consider that I've done something but I've maybe not been sharing it enough and there are people out there that still need help and so I I really um, gave myself a kick again kick in the butt um, about getting on and doing things and then I come around to the other side um, just be a bit gentle don't always I'm really bad at this um, I'm not always the kindest to myself and so it comes back to self-awareness um, self-acceptance, self-love, self-care, all those good things. And they're all part of what I teach. That's what I teach on lindafussell.com all the time. That is the the strap line of, of the business. So every every item that I um, you know, hand out that you get from me will have those things on there and everything I teach is about that. Um, so there we go. And sometimes I have to, look, I really have to look at the things I um, I know and how they apply to my life and that probably applies to lots of people things that you know how do you apply it to your own life and what what do you need to get support with we all need support and I've always said this coaches need coaches everybody needs a coach and every coach needs to have a coach or two or three and um, I've recently uh, reviewed who I'm working with and um, in the process of stopping some of the people that I'm working with because I think I've done my time with them as lovely as they are as people I've done my time with them um, 
and spending time with some other people that are inspiring and re-engaging with some of my great mentors and um, support people. Um, I've, you know, I used to work with John Asraf a lot. I haven't worked with him for all. last year. I was a bit, I don't know, he just didn't, for some reason, just didn't do it. So anyway, I'm getting back on that horse and, um, you know, making that happen again because he's certainly somebody that um, inspires, leads, and um, has lots of really good content that I resonate with. And obviously I'm still working with Jai Dev and his team. Oh, there's um, Dunnock in the garden. There's lots of, lots of birds in the garden. Right, I don't want to be talking too long. I need to get out for a walk because I've got a client in an hour. I need to walk the dog. So um, the other things I've really, and if you follow me on any social media, you will know that um, the environment is a big part of my life. Uh, I really do love um love spending time in nature I do believe it makes a big difference to all of us as who we are and I have seen just amazing um, the amazing changes that are happening every single day and absolutely loving it um, been capturing loads on on camera and sharing some of it and some of it's coming through in some of the pictures that I'm using on the website and doing you know different places different things but have you noticed are you taking time are you witnessing what is going on out there it was lovely to see today. Um, we've got an apple tree that my parents look out on from their lounge area. And um, it's been in leaf for quite a while. And my dad said, there's a flower on the apple tree. He'd noticed. And it's it's those little things. It's just noticing. Now, he probably has noticed those before. And I've just not connected with him enough to notice that he's noticed. Or maybe because they're not rushing around so much, um, he's noticed it for the first time. But then I'm noticing that the apple tree that's in the front of the garden... Um, we've got we've got four, three apple trees actually. The apple tree that's in the front garden is only just starting to get its leaves, and that's one of my um, my corner in time hashtags uh, pictures that I'm doing is the front garden, just the one one bed there. It's my wildlife garden, and it's looking very wild at the minute. Um, it, anyway, the apple tree there um, has started getting some leaf, which is great. The thing that is the other thing that came out, um, just looking at nature, is since September, we have had so much rain, right through, I mean, February we had the floods, so we just had continual, it felt like continual rain, and it wasn't really continual rain, but the ground, the water level, the water table was so high from September all the way through. Then in February, with the water table still really high, we had floods. Uh, we had storm after storm after storm right across the country, and it affected so many communities. And... You know, talking with my neighbour who walks his dogs out um, every day and how difficult it was to go up onto the fields because the mud was just knee deep and it was really, it was just difficult, it was hard. There were so many places we couldn't walk because of, because of the ground being so muddy and just unpleasant. I was spending more time, I've mentioned this at some point, more time washing the dogs than I was walking them and that was just grim. Um, anyway, now the ground is baked hard. We've, in April, technically had a drought. So they go, they say, I think it's, it used to be 15 days with less than two millimetres of rain or something was classified as a drought. They have upgraded that and I'm not sure what the exact stats are, but we have had a very, very dry um, few weeks. So April has been very dry, but even March, um, the latter end of March was very dry. The weather has been glorious which has been lovely for people in lockdown who have gardens or have the opportunity to get out. It must be really terrible for people that are living in um, small apartments, you know, bed sits and things. It, it's tough because the weather's lovely outside. It's probably quite warm inside and it must be really hard. So, you know, there's different people experiencing different things in different ways and really, you know, thinking of thinking of them. So, yeah, notice where you are and get out and about. I think the other thing, um, I've got my breakfast here, I can hear my porridge bottom, like looking at it going, yeah, I want to eat my porridge quickly. Um, are we eating healthily? That's a good question. Are we eating healthily? I'm not going to go into that now. I think I have. I think I've been a lot better in many ways. Uh, some ways I probably could be better still. I'd like to be, but that's don't beat yourself up. Um, last night was Thursday night, and so at eight o'clock we all went out into the street and clapped for our 
it's the NHS um, carers and essential workers, etc. Um, again, it was lovely. It's a, it's a few more neighbours out, a few pots and pans being banged. So it was good, and it's nice to connect with with people, and just have that um, collective grouping together. Um, so what else has been happening? I've been um, connecting with some very interesting people, some real uh, leadership thinkers. Um, I say leadership thinkers, some real leaders and thinkers and shakers, let's put it that way. Um, a lot of people from the NHS and local government, um, a few other people in different places, and it's been it's been inspiring, it's been interesting. I'm loving the way people are looking at what happens next, how, where do we go to after this? You know, we have an opportunity now to reset and change the way we do things. What do we want to change and why? Um, we're looking at paradigms, what, what, what paradigms need to be shifted? Um, and how does one do that? You know, how do we take these things forward? So there's been some very interesting discussions and I'm really uh, grateful for those. It's um, definitely inspiring. Um, I think that's probably about all I'm going to share for the moment. There'll be other things that I haven't touched on, but um, that's enough for now. I need to get out and have a walk um, just to get uh, things back on, back on track, um, get the dog out, meet with my client and uh, then see what's happening with this, this whatever's leaking in the roof. It's going to need um, a bit of a, a fix of something in the loft and so it means moving an awful lot of things around in the loft or tidying it up basically. I think we need to get sorted on there. The one thing that I didn't mention was that I woke up in the middle of the night. Not sure what woke me up. Um, I don't know if it was water leaking actually. Anyway, I would have I would have heard that I think. Um, I woke up in the middle of the night, you know, four o'clock, quarter past four, somewhere around then and um, Unusually, I struggle to go back to sleep. Now, that's very unusual for me. I don't have a problem sleeping, and sleep is one of the things I focused on very extensively in improving my life. So my yoga and meditation, my exercising, my walking outdoors, spending time in nature, and sleep. And obviously good food and all those things, but sleep has always been a, a really key mainstay part of what I do. Um, I have been particularly bad over the last few weeks, and I've mentioned this before, about going to bed too late. This week I've been shocking. I've had some really late nights. Last night I went to bed relatively early. Um, it was definitely before midnight. I think it was not long after 11, I think. So it wasn't too bad. Um, but then woke up at four-ish. The cat woke me up, but I don't, really don't, that normally really doesn't worry me. And my mind was buzzing, and when my mind's buzzing, it's just rubbish and I was like should I get up and do some work should I get up and write this all down should I just lie here and go back to sleep so I lay there for a bit didn't wasn't uh, relaxed or going back to sleep at all so I got up got my planner my planner that's here got my lovely um, freedom mastery planner and sat in my bed which I never do I never work in bed I, I firmly believe that this bed is for sleeping and not and um, just started capturing some of the thoughts that were there and working through some of the things that I've written previously in my planner about what is my mission, what am I trying to achieve in 2020, um, what are my objectives, and then I finally caught up on the, so what did I learn at the end of March, what, uh, what did I learn about myself, you know, capturing what was good, what was bad, um, what could have been better, um, what things would I like to change, what's important, and then <laughs> really got around to what do I want to achieve in April and so here we are on the 17th of April finally done that part again um, I probably spent I don't know best part of an hour doing that and at half past five I went right back to sleep now I'm ready I just lay down and I was absolutely out like a light so much so that I struggled to wake up this morning for my eight o'clock call um, it was a bit tough but anyway I got up, got, got onto my eight o'clock call, did all those things. I have not done my yoga yet this morning and I will be doing that. So that was that was something that was, if things are in your in your mind, um, and I've, I mentioned this in one of the blogs, one of the recent blogs, um, look at them, look at what's going on, see what it is that's there, explore it, mull it over, turn it around, you know, look at it from every direction, 
and then decide um, if it's useful to you and if it's something you want to work with or not work with and from that then make a plan of what you're going to do about it if it's something you don't want to work with let it go it's been done noticed it seen it thank you thank you for showing me that thank you for the lesson gratitude move it on and if it is something that's showing up of something you want to do differently absolute gratitude because now you know what your plan is and how to take that forward and where to make um, the changes in your life that are going to make a difference to you mentally emotionally and physically really what are those changes going to make in your life in your business and in your family in your environment etc so do have a look at that um, and i probably will end so there we go back again that's what happens when you don't put your phone on flight mode and you're using a your phone to record a video lesson number three as like i said before when these are live and you you're learning on the on the go uh, listen they're lessons for all of us so if you'll learn from that as well and i'm probably not going to edit that out i'll just uh, put a little oops call came in i didn't take the call and then our six messages in my voicemail so i really must put the phone on flight mode so i don't get all these things popping up sometimes it's fun like i learned you know last time we saw that sterling moss had died but that wasn't relevant really to what we were talking about um so that's those are kind of the things um that's that plan it's observing where you are and what you're wanting to do going forward and how you're going to take it forward are you going to let it go <coughs> are you going to do something different and what needs to be done and how are you going to put that in play oh i need some water bear with me while i get some water mm. and um oh, one other thing that i talked that happened yesterday just a, a quick, very quick one um and this is lovely so i have introduced my parents to zoom which is great and then my dad i've been saying to him he should be um he runs um the u3a local u3a churches looking at churches group and he um, is a very active member of um, the U3A family history group, local family history group. It's something that he just loves doing. It's his passion and that's great. So um, I've been saying to him that they should be doing things online and connecting with people because a lot of the older people really are feeling isolated and lonely. And he was, oh no, technology is too much. And anyway, so we've done a couple of Zoom things with him and he's been, you know, he's getting used to it. Anyway, he said to me yesterday, been thinking, do you know would it be possible to do his presentation online you know for these people for his group and I'm like absolutely so yesterday because I'm uh, social distancing from my parents at least we live in the same um, property but we have our we have separate houses effectively they have an annex and uh, we're keeping our two meter distance so yesterday using zoom I had a look at what he was doing on um, his side and how the presentation was looking and then we did a trial run and it was great it was lovely having him just talking away and we, you know I've taught him how to use PowerPoint and so he had embedded videos and all sorts of things I've done the videos for him but um, he embedded videos and it was all very good and he did a run through and it was great and we're going to be sharing that with um, local family this weekend hopefully um, on Saturday afternoon so he's going to be presenting to our UK family and once he's done that I'll probably record it but once he's done that um, he's um, then wanting to do it to the our wider family sort of global family and how we can share that um, more widely with the bigger group and then he's also wanting to do it uh, with his local um, family history group so that was great it was lovely to see and how things are improving there and he was so so much happier with having sort of found a way of of doing it so that was good um i said before help the elder elder folk they really really need um help to connect i love seeing i'm not a big advert watcher on tv not a big tv watcher but when i do watch i tend to skip the adverts and i noticed last night um on itv claire balding was doing something and i actually stopped the fast forward through the adverts and, and watched it and itv and bt with claire are doing a the one i saw is probably a whole heap of them which i haven't noticed um how to use whatsapp um how to do video calls how to do voice calls how to send messages how to set up groups how to send voice messages not just text messages um and it's just hard to stay connected and, you know it was it was great and it was really really well done so well done to itv and bt big call out for them and to 
Claire Balding, um, you know, a star, somebody I always respect and look up to, but um, an absolute star and brilliant, brilliant piece of work there. So that was good. Um, sometimes it's the little things, like I say, the little things with people at every level. So if you've got something little to share, little to share in your world, it's be very big in somebody else's world. So definitely share, help out, accept help, accept um, reward, accept other people's gifts. That's important. Accept a gift from another. It is important to do that. And I think that might be all it for today. Um, I had an amazing call yesterday. Sorry, there's another one. One more thing. Which was an HR lawyer um, talking on, from a business point, a business perspective, on what, things that are in place for uh, this time through the COVID-19 crisis. And... Um, it was it was really interesting because some of the things some of the things um i kind of have knew, i knew i'd read and all those bits and at the beginning i was going yeah i probably know all of this and then there were a few things that came out um lots of things about uh insurance around people working from home and have you got you know household insurance to cover it have you got employment insurance all these good things but she's also into well-being and there's a whole, there were a whole lot of things on mental health and how to manage that in the workplace and it got me thinking that once again that's an area that I know a lot about and have done a lot of work in and probably not been sharing as much value on that as I could be so that was a an interesting thing for me to see the other thing that um, that I was aware of well that came out that I sort of wasn't really aware of is that we you know, encouraged to work from home. We're allowed to do essential shopping uh, once a week. Um, we're allowed to go out to do one form of exercise outdoors each day. There's not allowed to be any uh, public gatherings. And um, only go to work if it's impossible to work from home. Now, this was interesting because if it's impossible to work from home, then you can go to work. But you have to respect social distancing and the guidance from... HMRC and if there's symptoms then as an employer you have to have in place things to deal with that uh, is it just a deep clean or do you close down or how do you manage how do you deal with things if, if somebody starts exhibiting symptoms so this was quite interesting to me because um, only, you know you can only go to work if it's impossible to work from home which does mean that there are some businesses that could still be operating and I think everybody stopped um, and I know with your with the eighty percent those that qualify for the eighty percent furlough um, package, etc., here in the UK, um, you can understand why they might want to do that. But um, I was aware that uh, the window cleaner um, was still operating, and I guess he really can't work from home. Is it essential services? It doesn't matter. It's essential shopping. The essential word comes in essential shopping, not in businesses. So his business operates on washing windows outside he very rarely sees people he does it on his own he can still do that work I've seen um, people repairing fences because we'd had some winds obviously with the storms and things we had winds I've seen people repairing fences they can't do that from home and they can do that quite safely without um, impacting others there's some garden um, services that are still operating that I've noticed and then came the question of um, dog grooming and you actually can hand your dog over quite easily without thing and because they're being washed they there should be no risk to the person that's doing that as they should be i would guess that they might need to wear a mask that might worry the dogs i don't know um but anyway our dog groomer has decided not to work which is you know absolutely respect her decision what it does mean is we have a very fluffy dog um my dog is uh, and you'll see she's on um, one of the more recent blogs I did which was uh, daisies and fluffy fluffy dogs or something um, and I've charged up my clippers which I bought a number of years ago and have not used them because she's really difficult to groom and she doesn't like it so anyway the clippers are charged and uh, ready to tackle I started looking at a YouTube video last night as to what I need to do and how I need to do it and this is going to be an exercise and Another one of those interesting skills that I've mentioned before. We can do all sorts of things if we just try it. So give it a bash. One of the 
ladies in book club, her husband had cut her hair and what a great job he'd done. It was really impressive. So we're learning all sorts of new skills. We're learning to um, take action, to trust ourselves, to try, to just try, just give it a bash. And you know what? It'll grow out. You know, cutting hair, it'll grow out. If something doesn't work quite well enough, it's okay. You can do something different next time. You can change it. It's not forever. So um, do take care. Do think about things you can do and learn and try. Um, there's so many courses available. Um, all sorts of things for anything that you want to do, whether it's uh, fixing ceramics, which Alicia has been doing and doing a fantastic job. I might actually interview her on that. That might be a good one to do. Anyway, that's it for now. I really do need to rush out. It's now I've not left a lot of time for a dog walk. Um, we'll see how we how we do on that. Um, so go well and have a have a great couple of days. Look after yourself. Um, connect with others. Uh, really connect with others. Um, don't leave it too late. Um, I learned yesterday that a very good friend that I used to work with um, has passed away. He got the virus and didn't make it um, and that was really sad because oh, it's probably it's probably three years or so since I last spoke to him and that you know he was somebody I really got on really well with so that's just not good you know time time goes by and we get busy and we forget to connect so take time connect uh, look at you know who you who you can be talking to at least talk to somebody every day um, find ways to help other people connect, um, accept help from others, uh, look after yourself, um, learn new things, uh, take on new courses, you know, do things that mean something to you. Um, if you, you know, if you're ready for a coach, take on a coach, do whatever you need to do. Um, just make your time now as useful and productive as you possibly can. We will probably never have another time like this. And for many people that's that's a good thing, but it's also, it's a great time for us to be retreating and looking inward and seeing what we can do with ourselves and also what we want to do differently afterwards. How do we, um, even if we were doing amazing things before, what could we be doing? We can always be doing things better and differently. So look at those things, look at what you would like in your life after this, when this is over, how do you want to be um, remembered? How do you want to be working with things? How do you want to look at things? Um, yeah, so that's it. That's it for today. Uh, have a lovely day. And we're, it's Friday, so, you know, it's weekend time coming up. What are you going to do differently? I know I'm going to be in the loft trying to fix plumbing. <laughs> that's going to be fun. Not sure how that's going to go, but it's going to be a new skill. I'm going to learn new things. I'm definitely going to have fun tidying up the loft. It's been on my to-do list. And I'm going to learn something new along the way. So good luck and see you soon.